Hey, it's Joel. Yep, we're back in the garage. Quarantine hair don't care. And I find myself in the middle of a really interesting situation that you yourself might be in as well. I'm doing small batch 3D printed manufacturing. In fact, you can see, let's see if I'm pointing the right thing. There we go. Those things right there, they're face shields and they're for dentists. And I've been printing hundreds of them, hundreds of them, and you might be as well. So I wanna tell you the story because you might wanna do 3D printed small batch manufacturing yourself. And so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to get going and how I start all these. I'm gonna show you the print quality and how they look at the end. And then we'll give you, eh, let's say five, five good tips if you wanna do this yourself. Just be warned, like this is my garage, this is my house and there's going to be messes in places. And uh, that's just how it is, we get by. So I'm gonna show you the truth about it all right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hey, welcome back. It all starts with a story, doesn't it always? I was contacted by Grand Street Dental in New York City. A nice lady by the name of Jennifer Plotnick wanted to get some face shields because dentists are about to start opening up across the country. And when the pandemic hit, they donated all of their PPE to frontline healthcare workers. That's what I appreciate about you. So they're kind of out and there are people charging lots and lots of money for face shields. And she saw my video. She thought maybe Joel can help me. And so I sent her some, she showed them off in her Instagram story and apparently She's popular on Instagram because I got hundreds of requests for these things. Hundreds, fielding emails and Instagram DMs, and it's been nuts. And so it's been a blessing in disguise, but it's been a lot of really hard work. And I've spent a lot of time on this, which is kind of why I want to tell you about it. So now that you know where this comes from, let's go upstairs and kick off some of the printers in the office, come on, come on. Hey, we find myself and you in the office. I've got three, three machines in here running and the camera's leaning up against something in a very precarious way. So let's get this, let's get this done. So let's see which way do I point. So over here, I've got a Prusa Mark III and it's running some generic PLA I found. Uh, up here, we've got a Prusa Mark III running the Prusa PPE Orange PETG. And then right here, Right here, I've got the Simi CNC Artemis with a Dexto 0.6 millimeter nozzle running Creality PLA. We'll start with that one. Come closer. We'll start with the Prusa Mark III. Uh, first, what we need to do, of course, between prints, put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel, and rub it down, and then I go to print, and I go all the way down to Manta Ray 0.3. So I've got 0.3 millimeter layers, and I'm running with that PLA, and it takes about an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 to print until the manta ray face shield model will be done. Let's move to the next one. Here we are <laughs> this superb camera angle. Look, if you saw the way, in fact here, I'm gonna get you a picture of how this printer, or how this camera is all set up. And then you can tell me uh, what the heck. Here we go. This is a Prusa Mark III. So this is PETG and it's got a flex plate from printed solid from the King in Canada. I think it is uh, this one. I just uh, go here. I go all the way down and I click and then I get the familiar, the familiar message <laughs> that the firmware needs to be updated, but we don't have time for that. So let's just print on one more in the office. Let's go better camera angle, right? The Simi CNC Artemis big machine printing a small thing at this point. This is originally, um, a flex plate, not from Gecko Tech. This is a Wham Bam Systems flex plate, but I tore my pecs. <laughs> so in a pinch, I used a sheet of Gecko Tech that I had. It's holding great. Peter, at some point, I'm gonna get another sheet of pecs from you. Don't worry, but this is running Creality PLA. It was nice of them to send that. And it's Duet, so uh, it's got a little panel do up here. I hit Control, and then the memory card, and then Manta Ray, right? and then Print. So eventually it'll heat up and print. Um, now I use Prusa Slicer to slice it for this. Awesome. Okay, these are all set to go. Uh, let's go get those printers in the garage. I'll start it up. We're at the Raise 3D N2 Plus. And you know, in the past I've had leveling issues with this thing, but we're just doing PLA. Should be pretty easy. And because I have jobs set up on this, all I have to do is poke a button that says, was the last print successful? It sure was. 
reprint your last job and okay. And the machine kicks it off. Oh, these, these, let me zoom out a bit. There's a lid on this I'm, from the review. I mean, you remember that lid and it's not required for PLA printing, but I don't have any place to put it. So I use these paint sticks from Home Depot and I hold it up. Genius, right? Next machine. Hey, this is the Zmorph VX. It's got a glass build plate and they sent me this Dima fix to use on it. It works pretty well. Again, jobs are set up. And so what I have to do, open that up and I clear this. This is the little, uh, instead of a skirt, it's just a little dot worth of filament to kind of prime the nozzle. I hit close, new job. The file's already set up, so I hit play. And that's it. And I close that and it goes to work. It's running with Zmorph filament that they sent. It's just PLA. Uh, next machine. Ha, <laughs> the Taz 6. I saw Evan and Caitlin just tweeted about this recently. And I was like, yo, Taz 6 buddies. This is the Taz 6. And it works great. I still love this machine. It's got an It Works 3D 1.75 millimeter tool head on there. And it's got a hardened steel nozzle. And since the Taz 6 uses these four uh, metal uh, washers to, to do the bed leveling. Uh, the electricity doesn't flow through as easily that hardens steel. Uh, but, and also, I don't know, there's a little piece of filament that kind of oozed out at the end. And so what I do is I kind of, there we go. Got it off. There it is. Because it, since it has to touch this with the nozzle, the nozzle has to be clear. So with that cleared off up at this menu, can you see that? Yeah, you can. This menu, I click and I go down to the bottom, print from SD. One, two, and print. So it goes over here and it establishes Z and then it levels and then it starts printing. Next machine. On this E2, I've got Overture PETG loaded, the flexible build plates in place. And so up here, because I have a job set up, I just need to tell it, tell it if it's a success or a failure. And at this point, it sure was that last one. And then I pick reprint your last job and hit OK. And the printer goes. I like these. These are workhorses. Next printer. Last machine that I'm currently using, this other E2. And just so you know, this is my garage. And I had to move my shop vac out of the way to stand here. But this one, very similar to the other one. It's running Prusament PPE Orange PETG. And it's got that thing up top. So yes, the last print was a success. Reprint my job. OK. And that's it. That printer goes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The number of the day is eight. Eight machines. We're gonna let those print. I'm gonna go get a bite to eat. I'm a little hungry and then we'll come back and we'll see how they did. Two hours later. Looks like this Prusa is done. Let's get this off the build plate. It looks, ooh, it looks pretty good. I'd say it's pretty good. And it's a flexible build plate, which means removing it is super easy. Let's get a closer look. This is a random spool of generic PLA I found. And it looks like the Prusa machine did a really good job with it. I'm impressed. I had the speeds going, so I mean, it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. And there's the little mouse ears right there. Look at those things. They help keep that down. This is a good model. Let's keep going. This Prusa is done right here. Let's get this up. There we go. This is in Prusa Mint PETG, the uh, PPE edition. Let's get it off. Love those build plates. Let's get a closer look. That looks fantastic. I really, really like how that looks. Good job printing that. That's good, that's good. One more machine to get. Now we're on the Artemis. This is with Creality Filament. Oh. I love a flexible build plate. So that's running a Dexdo 0.6 millimeter Ruby nozzle. I think it did a fantastic job. Look at that. Yeah, that's nice and smooth. We've got these three, which means we just need to add them to this giant pile right here. Oh my goodness. 
let's get these down to the garage and check the other machines and let's go have a look. We're at the N2 Plus. Uh, let's see, this has the uh, Vision Miner Nano Polymer Adhesive on it and it's just Creality PLA. So let's, it comes off really easy. That's, that's not too bad. It's still got a bit of a skirt stuck to it. Well, that's not too bad. It looks like I'm still having leveling pains with the N2 Plus and that piece of glass on there. You can tell the bits right there. That little edge, it's a little too close to the build plate where that edge, that looks really, really good. But the rest of it, the rest of it looks fine. I can just take a, a knife right along there. Oh, and let's see, I don't know if you can see that edge right there. That edge right there, a knife along there. That should clean it up just fine. Okay, so this is usable. That's great. That's great. Let's go, um, I don't know, what do you think? Let's go check another printer. Here's the Z-Morph. It's got that DEMA fix on the glass build plane. So we pop this up, magnets hold it in place, and then it should just love it when it does that. This is using Z-Morph PLA, and well, that's a darn decent model right there. Extrusions look pretty great. I know white isn't the easiest thing to see on camera, but uh, that looks pretty darn good. Well, this is usable. On to the next machine. The TAS-6 looks done, and uh, I have this. This is uh, from Zortrax. It's a big scrapey thing. And so I can kind of free off a piece there, and then kind of get it under, and then things start to pop up, and they pop off the PEI. Okay, there's one and two. These have a tiny little bit of an elephant's foot right there, so that can be scraped off pretty darn easily. The rest of the extrusions look fantastic. This is Creality PLA, and it prints great. Look at that. These are fantastic. Let's open this up and then take that out. Look at that. That's not too shabby. We gotta get these off the build plate. It is flexible. PETG loves to stick to this build tech like crazy amounts. Ugh, there we go. Got one off. Oh, there we go. Oh no. It's blue, so it's gonna be better again. This is Overture 3D PETG. Guys, gorgeous. Gorgeous. The only issues with this was pulling it off that, that build tech, which I mean, you run a bunch of these on there and it's gonna see some usage, but uh, God, these look great. These look great. Okay, on to the next machine. The orange proof cement looks pretty good on camera and the Ray's 3D E2 did a wonderful job printing this out. 0.3 millimeter layers look fantastic in this filament and the machine performed beautifully. These are good. Let's put these with the others and let's, let's wrap this up. <laughs> so we've got our ones from down here in the garage and we have all of our ones from upstairs. And the thing you're looking at now is this little wire that I've put across. The idea is that wire holds onto these and it makes it easy for me to grab them when I need to. So let's get these all up on the wire. They're all up there. That's fantastic. So now that I have the, wait, 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 wait. Ah, that's better. We've got product over there. So I showed you how to make it and how to pull it and how to judge for quality. And I showed you <laughs> running around my house doing it. Now what we need to do is talk about those five tips that I had for anyone else that was thinking about doing this or found themselves in a similar situation. I can talk about that while we're going over shipping. So shipping's in the kitchen, let's go. Hey, look at that. We're in the kitchen. This is actually shipping receiving for this little venture that we have going. And it's a perfect place to talk about the five tips that I can give you if you have to do this yourself or if, you're, or if you find yourself in a similar situation. In fact, I'll turn these boxes and they should then appear on the screen <laughs> as I say them. Okay. The first one, the first one, confirm the need. So if you're going to set up some sort of small batch manufacturing because a friend down the street asked for five things, that's probably not indicative of the business that you're going to receive. But if you've had multiple people reach out needing multiple amounts of things, that's probably indicative of a customer base and it might be time for you to think about maybe turning, uh, turning a few prints out for money. Uh, that's just what I found. In my case, I had hundreds 
of dentists around the country reach out, and so it was time for me to activate. That's my situation, it might not be yours, but if you find yourself in a similar situation, that's tip number one. Number two, adapt to your surroundings. Remember, you're establishing some form of business inside your house. Your house typically has other occupants or, or things in places that might get in the way. And so what you wanna do is adapt your business to fit your house. If there's things you can move around in your house or place where you live, then move them around. In fact, in my garage where you saw all of those machines printing, I had some shelves in the way and uh, stuff in the middle. And so I, I was tripping over things, getting in between the machines. I just, I wanted to clear my path. And so that's why I had to move things away and it made it more efficient for me to get to each machine. Uh, so in your situation, just adapt to where you're going to be and you'll be just fine. For tip number three, I'm gonna highly suggest you find and utilize free tools. So to keep track of all of this, I could have opened an Etsy store or used Gumroad or something like that. But what I'm doing is using Google Sheets and Google email. So I get emails in and I talk to people about their addresses and their shipping requirements and then I add it to a spreadsheet in Google Sheets and then as I ship things out, uh, I use the USPS website to buy the labels. Uh, I have a label printer already, so I put that to use and I found a way to print USPS labels on my four by six label printer and then I can put them on the boxes. And then once they ship out, I can take the tracking numbers and email them to the people that need them. And the reason I'm using USPS priority mail boxes is because these are free boxes. You just have to send at this service level, but it doesn't seem to be a problem because a lot of people that need this product happen to need it right away. And so it's all working out. And if you have other free tools or ways to make this sort of situation work better, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear about them. Number four is one that I'm not so good at, but what you need to do is budget your time. This is very similar to people who have jobs at home or work from home. You have to set timelines. You have to set a pencils down time when you don't have to do your work. Uh, right now, for this specific little job that I found myself fallen into, because the, of the immediate urgency where these things are needed, um, that, that time, that pencils down time tends to be gray. That is a gray area. Or uh, what I'll do is continue work later for going a little bit of sleep. That's not always the best thing. For me, this isn't something that I'm going to do long term. But if you're going to start a small batch 3D printing manufacturing facility in your house with a couple machines and you want it to be long term, you're going to have to find that, that beautiful way of budgeting your time that still lets you have uh, free time, you know, to play video games or play with your kids or interact with your spouse or, or what have you. Number five is ask for help. So when you're doing this thing in your house, if, if it's just you in where, in your place where you live, I'm, I'm sure hopefully there's family nearby or maybe there's a friend nearby. Like as an example, if you have one machine, and a friend down the road has two and you want to start a joint venture, that's asking for help. Or in my case, uh, my wife and my kids are helping put together these boxes. They are uh, three hole punching the face shield parts. They are getting addresses ready and we're writing numbers on boxes and they, they help get it all together. And it's great because I mean, we're a family, but we're also a team and we're displaying a whole bunch of teamwork when we get this done. So it's great. So that's, that's really tip number five is just don't be afraid to ask for help. That's it from my side. We'll turn the boxes back and these are gonna get filled with face shields going out to all sorts of dentists around the US and even some in Canada. I hope these tips help you in your journey if this is something you're choosing to do. If you have other tips or other suggestions that might make it easier for people to accomplish these tasks, leave those down in the comments. We've reached the end and if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Good luck to you, stay safe. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you, and as always, from a safe distance, high five.